Imagine having a single line command that automatically fetch the latest data from multiple sources and refresh your Power BI data sets. Well, that is exactly what I will be sharing today. And it has been a game changer for my department, saving me hours and hours every week to perform the data update from SAP to Power BI. In today's video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes on how I design my department's data pipeline. This automation has saved me countless hours that were previously spent on refreshing, extracting and transforming data. We will start from the very beginning, extracting data from SAP sources and APIs, and walk you through every step of the process until we refresh our dataset in Power BI. You can get access to all the resources I use in this video by signing up to my free newsletter via the link below. Before we dive into the technical details, let me show you how this automation works in action. Let us head to my computer. Watch as I run the script and input the year and month. Hit enter, and just like that, all the data would be refreshed and loaded into the database. My Power BI is also updated with all the fresh data. In this walkthrough, I will not be sharing my actual projects for obvious reasons, but I will show you all the details you need to develop your own. Once you see how this works, maybe you will also want to create something similar for your own department. Let us start with an overview of all the components in this automation. Let us start with the data source. In this example, there are three data sources that we need to extract data from. The first is SAP GUI transaction F.08, from which I will be extracting the trout balance. Then, there is data from SAP Business Warehouse, which is accessed using SAP Analysis for Office at in or AFO via Excel. The last one is API, where I'm pulling monthly exchange rate directly from Yahoo Finance. All this data extracted will be pushed into a SQLite database, which is a simple file you see here just like an Excel file. This is hosted in a SharePoint. Everyone with access to the SharePoint will be able to access the data. If someone from your team is familiar with SQL, they can even build more complex queries with the data available to help with their analysis. Then, we have a Power BI dataset that pulls data from the SQLite database for data modeling and visualization. This setup gives us the best of both worlds, the power of a database and the user-friendly interface for the user to interact with in Power BI. To automate this entire data pipeline, I have created a collection of Python scripts and modules. I have separated functions that interact with different applications into different modules. This modular approach allows for a more manageable and efficient code base. I chose Python over VBA for this project because Python is much easier to work with when it comes to data manipulation and loading later on. Let us break down each of the components, starting with the data from SAP GUI. We are using SAP GUI scripting to automate this process. I have four main functions here. The first function establishes a connection to a key pass database with the master password extracting all necessary SAP credentials for login purposes. KeePass is a trusted open source password manager. It stores sensitive information like credentials in a locally encrypted database. Compared to storing sensitive data in a plain text within Excel or Notepad, this approach provides better security and reliability. No administrative privileges are required to use this software. The key pass database should be stored in a secure location, inaccessible to other team members. The second function establishes a connection with an SAP GUI session to execute the script. If we are not able to find a session to connect to, the third function kicks in. It starts with an SAP session using the provided SAP credentials. Once the SAP session is loaded, it will then establish the connection with the SAP GUI session and return the session as an object that can be used in the fourth function. The fourth function is where we have our SAP GUI script. What happens here is that it will go to the transaction F.08, input the parameters, then export the data into the output directory. Before exporting, it will check if the file is already exist. 
If it does, then it will remove it to avoid error in the script. Then, once it is exported, the function will return the path of the exported file. So that's the automation process for data coming from SAP GUI. Next up is the automation for the AFO workbook refresh. If you have ever done this manually, you know it can be a pain, especially when working with large datasets. Clicking on variables, changing the year period, clicking OK to refresh. And then we have to wait and wait. The script here automates all of this using AFO's API method. AFO contains API methods that can be used to automate the input of variables, the change of filter criteria, and perform data refreshes. Let me just quickly walk you through. Similar to SAP GUI, I also have a function here to get the credentials for AFO from our KeyPass database. The script starts with setting up the correct directory for the template. This is where I will store all my AFO workbook template. Then, it starts the Excel application, open the workbook template containing the data, and enable the add-in. This is required because when Excel is open during automation, the add-in is not enabled by default. Then, using the SAP username, password, and client, the script will log in to the SAP BW database. Once the login is successful, we need to refresh the data source once. Then stop the refresh. Input the variable we want to change, in this case, the year and period, and finally turn on the refresh again. Once this line is executed, we will have our data refresh. We will then identify the destination file path and save a copy of the refresh workbook into the destination file path. And that completes our second data source. I will not go into the details about the third data source, which is the API for exchange rates, as it is less common in finance to extract data from APIs. Just know that this script pulls the exchange rates for the specified periods and load them into our database for further use. Now that we have exported our data from SAP GUI and SAP BW, it is time to push them into our SQLite database. I've written script for this in the SQL load function module. You might be wondering, why not just connect this exported data directly into Power BI using Power Query? That is a great question. Here is something that you may want to consider. SQL usually offers more control and flexibility when working with data, especially for complex transformations and calculations. In my opinion, it not only runs more efficiently, but the language is also easier to understand, even when you are doing complex transformations. And that is why I chose to use a SQL database to store my data instead of doing the transformation directly in Power Query as it gives me better options down the road. In the SQL load function module, I have scripts that convert the raw data extracted from different sources into data frames using pandas, perform some data transformations, and push the final formatted data into a database. I have separate functions for data coming from SAP GUI and the AFO workbook, as both are formatted differently. In this example, I have two different functions one for the data coming from SAP GUI, and another one for the AFO workbook. The data from SAP GUI is in text format. This script will transform the text file into a data frame and eventually push the data into the database. I will not go through all the details here, as it will take another video to do this. And the same goes for the Excel file for the data from AFO. The last piece of the puzzle is a function that creates a blank text file in a specified folder. This might seem a little bit odd, but there's a reason to this. In the background, I have an automated Power Automate flow that gets triggered when a file is added to this folder. Once triggered, it refreshes the Power BI datasets via a gateway. It is a simple yet effective way to kick off our Power BI refresh rather than using the API method which I think is quite a bit of a hassle to set up. Now let us piece everything together into one single script. First, we import all the modules that we have developed. Next, we declare all the variables and configurations needed to log into SAP. Specify the locations for our templates, exported data, and database. These paths are important 
as they tell the script where to find the necessary files and where to save the process data. Then, the script starts a logger to keep track of what's happening and catch any error in the process. Then, I have an argument parser here so that the script can take in input from the users to specify what data we want to extract and process. This allows us to customize the script's behavior directly from the command line, making it super flexible. We can extract multiple years and months using one single line if needed. Then we have a function here, which is the core of our script. It processes and loads data based on the specified section. Remember that earlier we went through the functions in the different modules? This is where we will specify how we want to process the data. For the file balance, it gets the SAP connection, runs the SAP GUI script, and loads the data into the database. For the sales table, it performs the refresh using the AFO API, and then loads the data into the database. For the exchange table, it fetches the specified year and month exchange rate data and loads it into the database. We then iterate over the years and periods provided, processing each section accordingly. This loop ensures that all the specified data is processed and loaded into our database. If no specific sections are provided in the command, it processes everything by default. Finally, once all the data is loaded into the database, we run the script to create that blank text file, which triggers our Power BI refresh. That's all the Python scripts I have for this example. Now let us talk about how I configured my database so that Power BI can read data from it. In the database, you will see three tables. These tables have been created to store data loaded from our Python scripts. In my database, I have set up different views. Views are like virtual tables that simplify complex queries. They store a query result, allowing you to access data from underlying tables without having to write the same query repeatedly. In this example, I have two views one for the sales table, and one for the trial balance. The sales USD view combines the sales table with the exchange rate tables, while the trial balance USD view joins the trial balance and exchange rate table. This pre-processing means we don't have to do further transformations in Power BI later on. To establish a connection with our SQLite database in Power BI, we must first install the SQLite ODPC driver which may require administrative privileges, which I am able to get it installed with the help of my IT department. Next, we utilize a parameter to store the database path. To fetch data from each table, we employ a straightforward select star from view query. This approach can easily retrieve the desired data inclusive of all the necessary transformations. This approach allows Power BI to retrieve the desired data, including all the necessary transformation which has been set up when we work on our view. If we need to revert to a previous database version, we can simply substitute the database path with the backup file, and the data will be automatically extracted from the archive version. This script automates all the data flows for me, making my life so much easier, and it saves me hours and hours every week on data updates from SAP to Power BI. I know this is a complex process, and I hope I have done a good job explaining it all. My goal is to spark some ideas and light bulb moments in you and show you what is possible with a little bit of coding knowledge and creativity. In future videos, I will dive deeper into each section if you are interested in more details. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.